Yo, what's up, people? I got a few notes written. We got a couple of things to go over. Um, before we get into details, can we talk about how uh, Mo, <laughs> LeVar Ball successfully got that guy, Chris Mo, Chris Cuomo, successfully got him um, out of character. He got him out of character. The dude even started using like a little bit of like Ebonics almost. LeVar Ball's a very smart dude. Very, very smart dude. First of all, Don Lemon, you're a punk. You punked out. You punked out of this interview. Don Lemon punked out of this interview. Let that be known. If he's not sick or has some other legitimate excuse, he's in Libya covering the slave trade or Iraq, Afghanistan, somewhere doing something very important. He punked out of this interview. He wanted no parts of LeVar Ball. Don Lemon. He punked out. And he set this, this Mo dude up, Chris Mo. Donna bitch. Donna bitch for that, yo. He punked out. Let's start here, right? The most obvious. The liberals flipped. The liberals flipped the script. The, the liberal media is supposed to be anti-Trump, right? They supposed to be anti-Trump. Now all of a sudden, they want LeVar Ball. To apologize. When has the liberal media ever taken Trump's side? So I, I guess it's safe for me to assume that either LeVar Ball is the enemy of liberals or the black man, the masculine, non-feminine black man is the enemy of the liberals or all of the above. Or all of the above. The answer is all of the above. See, the white, the, the white liberal does not want the example of a black father in the media. It is both. Because LeVar Ball represents a strong masculine black father. And we know they're trying to push the LGBT Q agenda. They're trying to push the feminist agenda. They're trying to push black fathers out of here. So when an example of a true black father hits the media, they attack and they flipped on it. They took Trump's side. They never take Trump's side. What have you known liberal media to take Trump's side? It doesn't happen. This is further proof that they do not like masculine black men. This is why hoteps have continue to be blackballed by mainstream media. They do not like us. So, that means the enemy of liberal left-wing media is LeVar Ball, Black Fathers, then Trump. Then Trump. This is white supremacy. When people talk about white supremacy, this is white supremacy. It's not alt-right. It's not white nationalist. It's not white nationalism. It's not the Confederate flag. No. No, it's left wing liberals. Drew Tang clan media is what white supremacy is. And they're trying to get the black man out the paint. Does anybody have any objections to that? You shouldn't. But those are the facts of the matter. And they proved it tonight. When has they were adamant about getting an apology for Donald Trump? Yes. Yes. Another play. The destruction of the nuclear family. Shout out to Uncle Hotep. What up? They trying to get the black man, the straight man out the paint. They trying to kill the nuclear family and everything that represents that. That's why they didn't bring gay ass Don Lemon up there. Because they knew they would. Don Lemon would have been too soft. He can't handle no straight black man. Don Lemon likes men. He can't handle LeVar Ball. You had to bring another heterosexual man. Mo Cuomo, Chris Cuomo was more of a man than Don Lemon. That's why they had to bring him up there because Don Lemon ain't got he ain't got the testosterone for to handle to handle LeVar Ball. Right? He a soy boy. Don Lemon a soy boy. He couldn't handle it. Liberal media trying to kill the black male. They trying to kill the masculine male. What exactly did Trump do? We don't know. We do not know what Trump did in China. That's a fact. That's a fact. 
Is Trump the type of person to try and take credit for stuff he didn't do? Yes, it's in the 48 laws of power. Take credit for shit you didn't do. Would Donald Trump follow those laws? Yes, he would. So it is very plausible that Donald Trump is trying to take credit for something he didn't do. Now, they said, LeVar Ball stated his son was already on bail. So when Trump said he got him out of jail, how are you going to get somebody out of jail that's already out of jail? So that's, that's a strike against Trump. Trump, that's inaccurate. You my boy, I love you, Trump. But that was inaccurate. You took an L on that one, homie. And I knew that. I knew from gate because I'm like, well, did Trump, I said this in my other periscopes, did Trump actually do anything? What did Trump actually do? Did he in fact get them out? I didn't, I never thought he actually did, right? I figured, you know, it, that's customary when you have Americans in another country, period, and they're locked up. Usually the United States interferes, the embassy gets involved Usually something, the college, it's UCLA. When LeVar Ball was asked who put the bail up, LeVar Ball didn't want to answer the question because the truth is UCLA probably put that money up. UCLA, the university, has the pull and the power to get them players out. Don't say they don't. Go look at their books. Money, money uh, cash rules everything around me. So you know UCLA did it because UCLA got the, got the money on the books. LeVar Ball was right to not say thank you to Trump. Like he said, he wasn't involved. All the players that needed to, needed to say something, they said something. LeVar Ball, he himself did not have to. Now, after, after Trump comes out and says, oh, you know, ungrateful and all that, if I'm a father and you come on Twitter and you talking shit about me, you definitely not getting a thank you now. You definitely not getting a thank you now. So I stand by LeVar Ball on that. Yes, Trump troll. I said that in my last Periscope. Trump troll. He troll. And I commend him for that. You know, it's all about re relevancy. You know what I mean? And, and I commend him for his, his pettiness and his troll and, you know, keeping us distracted because that's the president's job. It's not to um, change anything in America. It's to keep us distracted so they can continue um, their uh, world conquest alongside of Ju Tang clan. But what did LeVar down talk on Trump before he tweeted? I don't know. They asked, they asked LeVar Ball about Trump. And he said, who? Because if I'm in an interview and we talking about something, you bring up another man. Why are we talking about another man? Let's stay on topic. You don't got to bring up the president while you're talking to me. So his response is saying who was appropriate. He did not disrespect Donald Trump. He evaded the question. It's two completely different things. He evaded the questions. That's great media training. He turned it into a segment on CNN. You see, when you answer questions without getting your segment, you never get the segment. So you got to play the middle ground. Don't answer the questions and make them pay up or give you that prime time spot. And that's exactly what LeVar Ball did. What the spot he got tonight, he can't pay for. The spot he got tonight, Big Baller Brand could not pay for. I'm going to say it one more time. The time slot. That LeVar Ball got tonight on CNN, Big Baller Brand could not pay for. That was free advertisement for the BBB brand. It was brilliant. Had he answered the question when somebody asked him about Trump, that doesn't happen. And you know how many people probably called LeVar Ball? He said, no, no. He probably turned down 30, 30 offers to get CNN on a, on, a, on a, what is it, Sunday night? What's today, Sunday or today's Monday. On a Monday night. Woo! Monday night football on TV. Damn near prime time, I want to say. Yeah, he told homie he was going to give him free big ball again. You feel what I'm saying? Like that type of plug right there. Number one trend on Twitter. Do you know how much Twitter charges for a trend? Millions. They charge for that top spot. The sponsor spot. Millions. It's into the, I want to say 10 millions for that. I like, I like the fact that LeVar Ball has successfully pissed off the left and the right. I love that. I love it. I love it. He pissed off the left and the right because the right is pro-Trump. 
And they feel like, oh, he disrespected Trump. Fuck you. Kiss my ass. LeVar Ball is a grown ass man. He can do what the hell he want. Right? You, you can complain about all you want. So I love that he pissed off all these white nationalists, trumpet, trumpeteers. Yeah, y'all should be pissed. You know what I mean? There's nothing I love more than to watch somebody get pissed at, at something stupid. And then he pissed off the white liberal all the same time. God damn, that's a whole lot of power. No one man should have all that power. So if you're a trumpeteer and you mad right now, you're technically a snowflake. You have, you have merged into the lane of a snowflake. First of all, being a man is about not being emotional, not being controlled, not having your emotions easily controlled. You see my little pretty little light skin back there? Boy, you got, got a little light skin girl right now. now boy. I'm going to get killed for that comment. But he trolled the trumpeteers. I'm a white man, Trump supporter, but LeVar Ball is a great businessman, does his thing well. See, I can respect a man like that. You know what I mean? Support who you support, but that don't mean you gotta. You don't have to not give props to where props is due. No, LeVar Ball did not expect Trump to make a specific trip. What he said was, what LeVar said was, if he made a specific trip to go get his son, he would have thanked him. But Trump was there on other business. Let's be honest. Trump ain't do nothing. Trump ain't do nothing. Them boys was out already, out already on bail, on a way to come home. UCLA did the dirty work. UCLA did the dirty work. LeVar Ball just went to go assist. Like LeVar Ball, Boots was already on the ground before Trump got there for the board. What did he do? What did he actually say? Nothing. Now I'm going to go back to my previous point if y'all don't got any more questions. And y'all don't got no silly questions. HotepNation.com, by the way. This is what we saw tonight was white supremacy at its best. And I hate that term. I hate using that term. I, 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 I detest that term. But what white, what, what a lot of people don't recognize is when and how it's displayed. White supremacy isn't some white guy calling you the M-bomb. No, that's not white supremacy. White supremacy is when you bring LeVar Ball on TV and ask him to apologize to somebody you normally hate. That's like me coming on here and asking y'all to apologize to Sean Talcum X King or DeGay. How would I look, Hotep Jesus, asking y'all to apologize to Black Lives Matter? I'd never do that. I don't care what happened. I would never do that. It'd always be middle finger to them, right? I'm, I stay in my lane. If it's middle finger to you now, it's always middle finger to you. So for the media, if it's, if it's middle finger to Trump, then it's got to always be middle finger to Trump. Unless y'all have a plausible reason to put it down. Right? And y'all have plenty of reasons to put it down. You've taken none. Except for the opportunity to lambast, accost, Put on Front Street, attack a black father figure. That's how you know white supremacy is the media. Drew Tang Clan. It's the media. The same people black people go to for their information and trust. The same people black people go to that runs the rerun of racism over and over and over again is actually the system of white supremacy. The people that, that, that black people vote for is the white supremacists. And we saw that tonight when they switched sides. They switched sides. They switched sides. They were supposed to be against Trump. And what we should have seen tonight was if the CNN narrative stayed the same, they should have been on LeVar Ball's side. 
but they were not. Why? Because they hate LeVar Ball, because LeVar Ball is the uh, exemplification of a strong black father. I didn't say black man. Father. They don't want to see fathers no more, yo. They trying to get us out the paint.